Hey guys, what the heck is going on? Sam Cox here with Team Bropire, and we have another match for you guys today. This one is, again, go format, you guessed it. So, um, today I'm playing against the almighty Moki Moki channel. And um, I, I don't want to say that this is a series where we just um, keep playing on DB against all these other, um, you know, GOAT format, retro, Yu-Gi-Oh! channels, but it's been happening here recently. we just kind of been running into each other. Last week, I got the awesome opportunity to play against the one and only Jinzo and Tonic, and then and now I'm playing against the Moki Moki channel. We literally just kind of ran into each other, so this isn't a purposeful um, <laughs> match here, but it just kind of had happened, and uh, if this becomes a series, then hell yeah. Um, but um, So he is playing um, Chaos, hence the, uh, the Sork and the Kaiku, and it looks like he's playing Pitch Chaos. This is because uh, he's playing the Sinister Serpent, or maybe not, I'm pretty sure he is. This is another one of those matches where um, I'm watching it kind of like a week later um, versus watching it like right after I play it. Um, like I said in the last video, I kind of really like doing this because it, I get to watch it from a perspective as if like somebody else played it, because I didn't just play it, and I've probably played, you know, a dozen matches since then, so I really have no idea like, you know, what I'm even doing or why I'm doing the certain plays that I am most of the time. I know, obviously, like, why I'm doing some stuff, but it's really cool to kind of watch matches in hindsight sometime, like, you know, a week later or whatever, because it's, like, as if somebody else was playing it, like I said in the last video. But um, he's playing uh, Chaos, and I am playing my favorite GOAT format deck of all time, Monarchs, and I absolutely love Monarchs, guys. I'm, I'm sure that we all have certain decks that we just love to play, and they may not be the most competitive deck ever. Um... And, you know, Monarchs are really good in GOAT. And um, depending on, like, the rotating meta that's happening constantly in GOAT format, if you can put certain cards in Monarchs um, to make them, like, compete with the meta, then you can actually make this deck really, really great. Um, the attributes in Monarchs, 90% of the time, don't matter, especially depending on your build. On this one, it really doesn't. So I'm able to, like, play certain cards in this deck that I wouldn't be able to play, like, in, you know, Standard Chaos or, you know, maybe even Go Control or, um, you know, any other decks that really attributes kind of matter somewhat, but um, you know we all have this uh, this deck. I'm sure whether it's in regular modern format or goat format or you know any other retro format that we just absolutely love to play. And um, it may not be as crazy competitive, but it's just kind of fun for us. And for me, that is like 100% monarchs. Like I just love monarchs, and you know they're arguably probably like you know tier two deck in goat format most of the time. Um, monarchs probably have a disadvantage to chaos but um i've been working on this build here a lot recently i'm probably going to take um this build that i'm like working on um to a uh, go format tournament here in oklahoma in the next month or so and um just kind of try it out because i feel like over the last few, few um uh tournaments i've been playing you know nothing but just like chaos and um i really just want to kind of try to top or win you know kind of with something else so um that's why i'm kind of doing this so um i attribute the bisho gardener for Grand Mark and Grand Mark targets the Ring of Destruction and then he hits that. So technically that was a neg one on my end. Um in this match I think I was maining Grand Mark, but after testing against kind of like the meta that people have been playing over the last couple weeks since this since this match has happened, um I think that I started maining as a Borg instead. Um just because the Borg is man, it's a really cool card and, and um it can kind of bait out your opponent's back row while hitting their monsters at the same time. Um, so the back row most of the time will be chainable, especially in chaos decks. So, and with everybody playing chaos, I feel like Zaborg might be a better medical at this point. So, um, just FYI, I'm not maining Grand Marg. Um, I, I don't think so. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to be maining him in this, you know, as of right now, the end of, you know, 2020 slash the beginning of 2021 when you guys might be seeing this. So, um, yeah, Grand Marg, um, is a really cool card. I really like it, but it's just kind of iffy sometimes um it can hit back row and it can hit face down monsters it, it hits a face down card in general so that's really cool um the grand mark i'm sorry the board can only hit monsters but um and it can't hit back row but it can kind of bait out the back row thessalos is just a badass 100 percent of the time because your opponent's going to always have cards in their hand and if they don't have cards in their hand then you're winning so <laughs> thessalos is always just going to be a good card when it comes to monarch so um, I, yeah, pretty sure the Grand Mark tried to attack, he book and mooned it, and then I had some of that turn, so I just went for Thessalos, and I hit the card destruction. Card destruction is arguably one of the better cards that you can hit that's not a monster with Thessalos, just because, like, you know, you save your combo pieces in hand, and you want to try to just, you know, keep them, 
you know, kind of, I don't know, just in your hand until you got what you need. And then car destruction can really kind of screw that up. But, um, you know, sometimes it's good if they hit, you know, your hand and you just have like, I don't know, one or two monarchs and uh, a serpent or, you know, whatever, because monarchs can brick. Um, for people that played Monarchs in dual Alliance format, people that are playing Monarchs in, you know, 2021 or 2020, it's, uh, they're, they're known for bricking. I'll tell you what, dude, back in 2005 in go format, Monarchs were the, they were the birth of bricking. <laughs> they, they have for at like of all time, just have always been bricking. They're like the one archetype that's like, you know, sometimes you just have bad hands and it is what it is. So, um, right here, we're going to play Metamorphosis. And uh, Troop or Scapegoat to get a Thousand Eyes Restrict. I really like playing um, Thousand Eyes Restrict in Monarchs. Um, I don't think I did in the last profile that I did like two or three years ago. But since then, I've been really playing it because it makes it to where, like, you know, you can just uh, have another tribute monster while stealing your opponent's monster at the same time. So I just, um, I really like it. And um, not only that, but it kind of allows you to play less... Um, I don't know, tribute spells that are only good in certain scenarios. Like, for instance, I only play three Soul Exchange and then um, three Metamorphosis in this deck. Uh, and, then I, and then I main six Monarchs. Um, and then I play a whole bunch of just, you know, different um, toolbox cards, so to speak, like a Warrior Engine and, you know, that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I play play a handful of traps and, you know, play Scapegoats and stuff. And it allows us to play Scapegoat kind of for the... Um, I guess you could say defense or, or whatever, but um, no, I really do like stealing my opponent's uh, monster with Thousand Eyes Restrict and then kind of tributing it um, on the next turn or main phase two or whatever for something like Thessalos. So, um, yeah, and I I don't think that a long time ago I was playing very many battle traps. I think now I am kind of playing a handful of battle traps because, uh, you know, um, I feel like things like Ashura Priest and, you know, Tsukiyomi really just kill this deck and we really need to try to. Um, get rid of them and and right now um like i said at the end of 2020 uh slash beginning of 2021 um there's this um you know like i say all the time like goat format is a rotating meta and certain cards become popular because other cards become popular and um i guess just kind of a, a quick um you know lesson on what's going on right now like gravekeeper spy is a very 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 popular card in so many decks, even just standard go format decks, but especially chaos decks, because Gravekeeper Spy has 2,000 defense. Things like Air Knight and Kaiku, and you know, just like uh, the big dogs, like they can't get over it very easily. Blade Knight can't even get over it. Like Blade Knight will literally just go make your opponent's Gravekeeper Spy. That was face down, go plus one. So um, people are running things like um, level two warrior and you know stuff like that which i am in this i am in this deck too um they run things like you know level two warrior and a lot of people are maining kaiku and a lot of people are maining blade knight and just honestly a lot more powerhouse attack monsters than they have been in the past obviously things like tribe and breaker and air knight and things like that have been relevant for i mean literally 15 years but um over the last you know i would say probably year or so um things like level two swordsman kaiku blade knight um uh, Abyss Soldier, honestly, even at that, um, cards like that have just become such a um, staple, I feel like, in, in Go format. So um, that's why I kind of just decided to main, I think I'm maining three Sakurathu Armors in this build now. So it's kind of um, it's kind of crazy. Um, level 2 Swordsman is really cool. I, I like maining this card because, like I said, it's a good meta call. Um, right now, everybody's playing Chaos, it feels like. Like, everybody's playing Chaos. And you just go plus one over it. And they don't get their flip effect, which if you can slow down the chaos engine, slow down things like, you know, the Koichi and Spy and, um, you know, Merchant, especially, you know, things like that. It really can just uh, put a damper on what they're doing. So, and it forces your opponent to make, um, I don't want to say bad plays, but plays that they have to make. Like right here, he was forced to um, tribute my level two swordsman after snatch stealing it for Thunder Dragon, just so I wouldn't have that level two swordsman out on the field anymore. So, um, yeah, level two swordsman is, it's not a very powerful card when you're talking about attack or defense. Um, but it is a card that has to be answered. Um, if you're trying to, you know, play around it or whatever. So I just normal summon, uh, exile force right here and attack because he only had 400 life points left. Um, and I force him to use Raigeki break and pitch a delinquent duo. That is not looking very good for him. Um, in his defense, I don't know what happened this game. I think that, um, 
I think I was just rip. Okay, rip our destruction. That probably hurt him a lot. Um, and then I don't know. It's kind of a mixture of him not being able to see a lot of engine cards. I think I knocked his serpent, and I knocked his faiths. Um, so that seems like it kind of probably hurt him a little bit. Um, the whole point of this monarch deck is I want to say that it's it's a very big hate on like flip and face down monsters and just problematic cards in general. So we main um, three metamorphosis, three soul exchange, um, three Zaborg. Um, what else do we main? Snatch steel um, and Nox. And, well, I guess Snatch steel isn't really one because that does more face up. But you know, with the Nox and metamorphosis and everything, there's like 12 to 15 cards in the main. Oh yeah, like Exile Force and two level two swordsmen and stuff. Yeah, there's like 12 or 15 cards in the main that like literally just deal with face down monsters, arguably on the spot. So um, it's really hard for a lot of chaos decks. If if I you know if I'm not breaking you know as monarchs do, um, if I'm not you know just absolutely drawing crap, like it's really actually hard for monarchs monarch decks to. Um, I'm sorry, uh, chaos decks to deal with um, this monarch build. I feel like I, I like to think anyway because I, I've been testing this deck like I said for the last couple of weeks and um, I really do like it and I re it's a really fun deck and it, it's it's been good seeing all these like chaos players on on dueling book just kind of have a hard time dealing with this because I feel like um, I don't know in in a, in a cool way I'd like to see this monarch deck become like a very relevant thing and then. Um, chaos maybe kind of like have to check monarchs for a second and be like okay so this is the deck now and then what do we need to play to out it and so i really you know in a perfect world i think it'd be awesome um man i wish he would have opened up trap dashi right here that'd have been awesome that happens actually a lot of times um so somebody will you know act, open up trap dash shoot and you know set it first turn and i only play 13 monsters in the main i play six monarchs um two azure priest and then three or four, I play four warriors and then uh, a serpent. So that's all I play. Um, but I mean, I play 3000 eyes restrict and two Rota and you know, uh, three meta and you know, that kind of stuff. It just, so there's more monsters, but like, as far as like main, like monster cards, like I only play 13 and uh, there's a lot of times when I don't open up, you know, a whole lot of monsters or hardly any, if any, and they activate trap dash you. So that's kind of one of the perks with this deck, but I could, um, I could go on and on about the perks in this deck for sure. Like there's so many, um, just random co times when, you know, like that, why this deck is good. Like for instance, unless serpents in the grave, um, like Kaiku doesn't affect this deck at all. Um, because it, the only thing that like, I mean, if they, if they banish like, um, exile force or, you know, something or serpent, I, I guess that's really the only two because I use premature for exile, like, 90% of the time. I think last game I used it on Grand Mark to try to push for damage, but um, yeah, I really, really I really like the kind of random perks that this deck has as far as like being a quote-unquote anti-meta deck. Um, okay, cool. So we just drew into the best combo. I feel my favorite combo in this whole entire format, <laughs> which is Soul Exchange and Thessalos. Or we're going to go Grand Mark because he's got a back row. Probably going to go Grand Mark. Okay, just to bait out that back row. But then he's got, what is it? Drum roll. No, okay, MST, cool. That's one of the cool ones to hit. Um, honestly, a lot of these times, like right now, like I said, I'm not, I was maining Grand Mark when I started playing this deck again a couple weeks ago. Um, but I, I moved to Zaborg just because, man, I feel like all the back row nowadays like, are like Raigeki Breaks and Scapegoats and stuff like that. I, I don't feel like I'm doing a ton of justice right now with Grand Mark. So he's definitely, um, I'm not, I'm not even siding him either because, um, you know, I'd rather just side Mobius. Um, so here's a really cool interaction. So I like to in phase escape you obvious. I mean, this is nothing new, like even slightly, but, um, this, I, what I would do is probably steal it and then, um, uh, you know, tribute it for Thessalos just to not lock myself out after I steal his faith. Um, and just to kind of apply the pressure. Um, and there's not, Man, in his hand, there's not like a whole lot of good options for me to take for him. I feel like maybe Thunder Dragon, but the rest of them, I think Sork might have been probably the one that I should take because that he didn't have a Dark Monster Engrave. Um, that's probably what he's hoping that I would do. So, um, 
yeah, and this this is really cool. It keeps myself from getting locked out. You can always kind of, um, you know, just tribute your monster. Or, I'm sorry, tribute your Thousand Nights Strike for your monsters. It's more or less the same um, concept of whenever people play things like Air Knight and they tribute that their Thousand Nights Strike for the Air Knight because you simplify the game state by taking your opponent's monster and then. Um, you know, you get rid of one of your monsters, but then you steal theirs. So it's, you know, a lot of the times it's a plus one. And then Air Knight, um, you simplify their game state, and then you try to push forward on yours um, with the Air Knight and drawing. But in this scenario, you simplify the game state. Everybody loses one whenever, you, you know, you tribute, you know, one of your monsters, and then you take theirs or whatever, depending on which monster that you take, obviously. But then you simplify their game state even, <laughs> even farther by having to make them discard a card. And then a lot of the times... It will go a third step by, if I go into battle phase, then they will um, activate Sakurati, Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction, whatever, on Thessalos. And then, um, you know, it, so it really in one turn, you can simplify the game state by like two or three cards per person by activating Metamorphosis, um, taking their monster, and then tributing for Thessalos. Um, I am rambling again, so I apologize. Those of you that have watched some of these Goat Fortnite videos that I do in these matches um, know that I do kind of ramble sometimes. So, um... He drew Book of Moon, uh, so that's a thing. Yeah, I about to say right here, he probably want to just book the Thousand Eyes. He's kind of really playing from behind at this point. Um, that's going to go to the grave. Of course, he finally, he has a dark, but I do have Snatch, so. Um, oh, is this a 2-0? I don't remember if this was a 2-0 or not. I don't, know, I don't know if we went to Game 3 or not, because it's looking pretty brutal right now okay so this oh, okay BLS okay yeah he can just clear the whole field right here boom like if he had a few more resources I think that he'd be in an extremely good position um, but uh right here it's uh, I mean I got snatch and scapegoat so we will see we will see he doesn't have any more darks in grave, and it sure is a light. So, um, man, that's a bummer. Okay, so you would think, yeah, activate snatch steel, and then eh, he just said da da da. Um, going to battle swing for that three k. Main two, set, and then. We're going to pass the turn. You don't want to set the big shield garden in because scapegoat couldn't activate. For those of you that, um, you know, I'm just trying to keep it elementary sometimes. Um, so he's going to gain a, gain a thousand. He's going to set magic jammer as a bluff. Maybe set a sure priest. Yep. Okay. Um, now I think right here, what I would do, because I mean, I, whatever monster it was, I, he has less than 3000. So if he destroyed the BLS with battle trap, then cool. Like, we're simplifying game state even farther, but if not, then, like, you know, unless that was, like, a, a cyber jar or something, then I think we were good, so, boom. Okay, all right, well, two up, two down. It's a two and O. Oh. so, um, yeah, you guys make sure to go follow Moki Moki channel. I will put his um, channel down below so you guys can go check it out. He does do a lot of, you know, GOAT format and other retro um, Yu-Gi-Oh format um, content, so you guys make sure you go show him some love and give him a sub, and we will, uh, we'll see you guys later.